Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Gold with an analysis of EEM Emerging Markets Technical and Elliott Wave Analysis for you. I've not had a look at this market before, this is in response to a member's request and I, looking at it, it looks at the daily chart level really choppy and gappy. I don't think it has sufficient volume for a reliable Elliott Wave analysis, so let's have a look at some classic technical analysis first. I will give this much more weight. Let's have a look at the bigger picture, looking at the weekly chart level. It looks like price is in an upward trend. It's made a series of higher highs and higher lows, and so downward movements should be presenting an opportunity to draw the trend. I've looked back about three and a half years and added some horizontal lines for support and resistance. Price is very close to resistance, almost at resistance here, just above 38, the next resistance line just above 39, the next one just above 40, and then the next one just a bit above 42. Along the way down, I would expect some support around about 35.20, found support here, resistance just a little bit below here, support here, here and further off to the left of the chart as well. So if we see another pullback, I would be looking for it to end about here. A little bit of cause for concern for the recent movement, it's moved higher with declining volume. The rise in price does not have support from volume and so their upward trend may be unsustainable. We may be looking at another pullback before that's resolved. But I've also noted that the S&P and to some extent the Dow have been doing this for some years. So that's not really too much of a concern. I think we can see rising price on declining volume and it can persist because it has persisted for the S&P for some years now. I think that what that means eventually is if we do get a big change in a bear market it's going to be rather strong and that will have to be resolved eventually one way or the other. I can see some resistance here from on balance volume. This line's got a rather shallow slope. It's not very long held. It's been tested three times before. If we see on balance volume break above this line, that would be a reasonable bullish signal from EEM. But I'm also noticing some, if we get a new high here, we will then have some long term divergence between on balance volume and price. And that would indicate that there's some weakness in this upward movement. But looking at ADX, it's only just above 15 and it's rising. The positive DX line is above the negative, so ADX is telling us that this upward movement may be the early start of a new trend, and it's certainly nowhere near extreme, because it's well below 35 and the directional line is below both, sorry, the ADX line is below both of the directional lines, so there's plenty of room for that trend to continue. At the daily chart level, RSI is not overbought and does not exhibit yet any divergence with price. It did at this high here. We saw RSI reach its high here and then price found its high later. And so that divergence persisted for some time before we saw an end to this upward wave and a downward pullback here to find support here. If we get another high here, we may well again see some divergence between RSI and price. And if that happens, then I'll be looking for a little bit of shorter term divergence, and then I'll be looking for another pullback. But at this stage, this market does look like it's in an upward trend at the weekly chart level. Let's have a look at more recent movement at the daily chart level. Here's the last reasonable pullback, and the last little rise up here with shorter pullbacks along the way up. These couple of days are rise in price along with rising volume, so that's good to see. Here we've got rising price with rising volume, here strong volume, and then lighter volume as price moved up to this last high here. And these few days here, up to the last high, rising price on declining volume. So there are, are some signs of weakness for the short term for this market. We may be about to see a pullback, but the larger trend at this stage does still look like it's upward. At the daily chart level, the short-term Fibonacci 13-day moving average is above the mid-term Fibonacci 55-day moving average, and they're both above the long-term 200-day moving average, and all of them have a positive slope, and price is above all three, so there is an upward trend. At the daily chart level, ADX is still rising, the positive DX line is above the negative, so there is still an upward trend. It's not yet extreme, ADX is not at 35, and it's not above both directional lines. So at the daily chart level there is still further room for price to continue rising but here's a cause of concern for that view. 
RSI reached overbought here at the last high, just reached into overbought. Now I've looked back over the last four and a half years for this market and I've noticed that when RSI reaches overbought at the daily chart level it doesn't tend to stay there for very long. But price can continue upward and it can show some long term divergence with RSI before eventually finding a high for an upward trend. That divergence can persist and has persisted previously for up to a month. So this doesn't mean that the trend has to end, it just means that it is nearing its end despite what ADX says now. And so if we start to see divergence with RSI and if ADX starts to show some extreme readings then I would be more cautious. I would be wary of perhaps exiting long positions but for now this trend looks reasonably reliable sorry, looks not reliable, it looks reasonably strong and healthy at this stage. I've drawn a tentative support line along here for this little upward swing. If we get a good solid full daily candlestick below that line and not touching it, it would be breached. And then I expect that this market may be in a deeper, more time consuming pullback. Okay, let's have a look at some Elliott Wave analysis. And this is a rough guideline only. A word of caution, I do not think this market has sufficient volume for a reliable Elliott Wave analysis. So the first thing I do when I do an Elliott Wave analysis of a new market is I look at a monthly chart, or if I have more data I'll look at quarterly, but for this one it doesn't go back too far beyond this point. And I've looked at the monthly chart with as much data as I can get, and this is from my bar chart data feed. The first thing I notice is this big downward wave here looks like a three wave structure. Now that doesn't mean it has to be a three, it could be a five and so I've got an alternate looking at that possibility. But it does look best as a three and so I would expect that's a little bit more likely than it is a five. But I have learned the hard way when I used to do regular almost daily analysis of Apple that individual equities don't have sufficient volume for reasonable looking Elliott Wave structures. Their threes can look like fives and vice versa and so it's essential to consider alternate wave counts and consider both possible structures. If this is a three then what that means is the following upward movement should be a minimum 0.9 length of the three down and it may make a new high beyond the start of the three. The biggest structure one degree higher at grand super cycle degree may be a flat correction. They're very common structures. They subdivide three, three, five. But the B wave for super cycle B would be incomplete. It looks like it's subdividing as a zigzag. Five, three, and we need the five up to complete at least to this minimum, somewhere within this normal range. The normal range of a B wave within a flat is from 1 to 1.38 times the length of its A wave. The target is the most common ratio for cycle C to reach equality in length, with cycle A at 59.82 that would bring price up within the normal range for super cycle B, so that should be a reliable target. Within cycle C, no second wave correction can move beyond its start below 27.61. Let's have a look at what's happening in here at the daily chart level where cycle B is slow down here. And this is what I mean by choppy, overlapping and very gappy. And when you see a market with a lot of gaps like this, it doesn't usually have sufficient volume for any reliable Elliott wave analysis. So again, this is a rough guideline only. But it does agree generally with the idea that this market is probably in an upward trend, probably to continue for some time. However, word of caution about that, the targets that I've got with this Elliott wave calculation do look to be a little bit too optimistic for what I'm noticing some while I'm noticing some weakness in the classic technical analysis at this stage. That could change, of course. We could start to see some strength. At this stage, for this cycle wave C, it looks like we've got an impulse for primary one, a zigzag for primary two, primary three underway with an impulse for intermediate one, a double zigzag for intermediate wave two, and I have a target for intermediate wave three, which assumes the most common ratio to intermediate wave one. If we drew a base channel around primary waves one and two, we'd draw it from the start of primary one to the end of primary two and extend that on out, it would sit up around about here, place a parallel copy on the end of primary one. The first thing I notice about this daily chart is such a base channel would be well and truly breached by the end of intermediate wave two, and that's another indication that this market probably doesn't have sufficient volume for reliable Elliott wave analysis. 
That's not usually how lower degree second waves behave with base channels. A base channel around a first and second wave, one or more degrees higher, should offer strong support or resistance to lower degree second waves. They shouldn't breach those base channels. This one would have if I drew it on here. That's why I took it off. So I've drawn a best fit channel for this market and this does look like it is probably where price is going to find resistance. It's been overshot a little bit here. It may be tested again. If it is, I'd expect a bounce or a reaction down from there. And if this support line is touched, I would expect a bounce up from there. Most likely not. That doesn't have to be what happens. If it doesn't, then something else might be happening. Within intermediate three, no second wave correction can move beyond the start of its first wave below 33.94. This is an alternate idea at the monthly chart level, as I said before, threes can look like fives and vice versa, particularly for markets with lighter volume. And the most reliable Elliott Wave analysis I've been able to do is on very heavy volume markets like the indices and global markets like gold spot price, and that's why I analyse those every day using Elliott Wave. For this one, it looks like it's possible we could have had a five down. The fourth wave here could have been more brief and quick compared to its counterpart second wave. This could be behaving like a commodity. When fifth waves are very swift and strong, they force the fourth wave correction that comes just before them to be more brief and shallow than otherwise. And that can turn what should look like a five into what looks like a three because of the disproportion between the fourth and second wave corrections. That might be what's happened here within this downward wave. If this is a 5, then that means that the following 3 up can't move beyond its start above 55.83. The target for cycle B would be for, sorry, super cycle B would be for cycle C to end just at least slightly above the end of A, above 50.83, so that it avoids a truncation. And it still would need to subdivide as a 5 wave structure. It would still be not even halfway through yet. The invalidation point is the same. The structure at the daily chart level would be exactly the same. That's all for me with an extra update for you for another market in, in response to a member's request. And if you would like daily analysis of gold and weekly analysis of oil and silver, you'll find it in the membership area of Elliott Wave Gold.